To calculate the far fields of the dipole with a triangular current distribution, we will divide the dipole into infinitesimally short segments of length, each one of these is of length dz. Then we will assume each of these infinitesimally short segments has a homogeneous current over its length. By doing this, we can treat each of these infinitesimally short segments as a Hertzian dipole. Then, to calculate the total radiated field from this entire dipole, we add up all the contributions from each Hertzian dipole. That is, we can integrate over its length, defined E theta, we'll integrate z equals minus l over 2 to l over 2 of dE theta. And this dE theta is the contribution to the electric field from each Hertz, each Hertzian dipole segment. Now we can't just blindly plug this in here. We needed to make two changes. Go through each of the terms in this expression right here and see if you can figure out what two things need to change. You can pause the video if you like. What needs to change is the following. First, we need to replace I0, the amplitude of the current, for our Hertzian dipole, with I, which is a function of Z, since we have a triangular current distribution and the current amplitude is going to change with Z. And second, we need to replace L, the length of the Hertzian dipole, with dz. Then each infinitesimally uh, short dipole radiates into the far field the following electric field. So for dE theta, we're going to have j k eta naught over 4 pi, i is a function of z, times dz, e to the minus j k r prime over r prime, sine theta r prime. And then to simplify things, since the antenna is electrically short, still it's still short, even though it's not quite as short as a Hertzian dipole, so we're going to assume r is about equal to r prime, so that our whole dipole is approximately at the origin. And so everywhere where there's an r prime, we can put an r. And we're also going to say theta r prime is about equal to theta. So incorporating these into our expression for the total E from the entire dipole, we get j k eta naught over 4 pi r e to the minus j k r sine theta and we're integrating z from minus l over 2 to l over 2. We're just integrating i as a function of z dz. And here, this, we can solve this integral by finding the area under the current function. So basically the area of the triangle. So that's going to be i naught l over 2. So then in the far, the total far field from the short dipole that we have is we get about j k eta naught i naught l over 8 pi r e to the minus j k r sine theta. So how does this compare with what we got earlier for a Hertzian dipole? The radiated far electric field for the short dipole with a triangular current function, what we have here, is the same as that for a Hertzian dipole. The only difference is that we have a different amplitude. We have an 8 here instead of a 4. Alright, you're going to be using the same procedure here that we've used for this example. You're going to be using the same procedure when you're answering question 1 of homework 7. Okay, we've seen now how we can use the radiation from a Hertzian dipole to calculate the radiation from a longer dipole, and a more realistic dipole. And we can actually extend this methodology to other types of antennas as well. This means we now have flexibility to choose an antenna that is optimized for our specific application. So what shape would you suggest for an antenna for this application? We might imagine a dipole antenna is not really ideal because it would probably extend at least a little bit wider 
than the transmission line itself. This is because one of the dipole arms would have to extend outwards from the outer conductor especially. So this means we not only have to make an incision to fit the transmission line into the body, but we would also need a wider incision to fit the wider dipole antenna in as well. So spend a minute brainstorming what kind of an antenna shape might be more ideal for our situation.